Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is a distant key, keyhole saw. Distant and Sons. Somewhere around 100 years old. This is a little saw that I got in that box from the antique shop the other day. And keyhole saws are usually pretty badly screwed up. This one seems to be only really broken on the tip. It's got the tip broken off and the blade's a little bent. Nine times out of ten, a, blend, a bent blade on a keyhole saw is pretty much standard operating procedure. Wondering if it had an etch on it, I don't imagine it does. It is a distant. That's the original medallion. It's a distant, it's got the little keystone on it that says Distant and Sons, Philadelphia. Doesn't have the H on it. It's got Distant and Sons, Philadelphia. Now the reason I'm using the razor blade, the razor blade doesn't tend to scratch away the steel and destroy the etch. So I was trying to look and see if it's got an etch first before I go after it with the sandpaper. The sandpaper, even though you put a backer on it and you do everything you can, it has a tendency to scour off the edges of the letters. It makes them unreadable. Not an old saw that's pretty badly pitted. Sometimes all you got is a guess, anyways, and there's no point in making it harder yet to try and figure out who made the thing. Now, the only reason you really want to do that is to say, oh, yeah, this is a distant saw and it's got an authentic distant blade on it. And it if you're a collector, which I'm not, it can make a difference in the value of it. To your collection or other collectors who may want to own it but I use them distant is nice because distant made damn good sauce they've got good steel in them distant made his own steel in his own shop and knew exactly what went into it and how it worked so it was consistent that makes a big difference in the way the manufacturing process works. Follow the GIGO principle. Garbage in, garbage out. If you've got control over what goes in, you can make the product that goes out a lot better without as much work. Suppliers are great. Having companies that are willing to make small batches of something that you need specifically and they have the talent and equipment and wherewithal to make the small batches for you at a reasonable cost that's a good idea but if you're somebody like Distin or Henry Ford for that matter it's going to make thousands if not millions of items from the materials that you're using controlling the source makes quality just a whole different world.
when I was in the unfortunate situation of being a project engineer and being involved in starting and launching new products and designing processes to make them, setting up the equipment. It was always something that I liked doing was finding a supplier that I could trust. And suppliers always wanted to have a customer that told them exactly what they wanted. Now, if I had a supplier that said, we can give you ABC, and ABC wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I knew that I could make ABC work as long as ABC stayed exactly at ABC levels, I could accept that what I got from them wasn't exactly what I wanted. But when I had a customer or when I had a supplier that wanted to have when I had a supplier that wanted to ship me something that wasn't quite what I wanted half the time, then I had a problem. And the problem was all mine. I was always in the position of saying, yes, you can, or no, you can't. In the beginning of any project, I wanted to have the parts brought in and verified. Then I wanted to have a safe launch quantity. I wanted to have enough to make the first three shipments in stock, sitting on my floor, ready to make them. Now, quite often they'd say, well, you know, if you bought 100000 your quantity pricing would be better. Then, if the 100000 was okay for the first half and crap for the second, I had 50,000 bad parts sitting there in my shop, absorbing my inventory costs, and making it so that I couldn't deliver on time. Batch of three was enough that I could verify that they were capable, and I knew that I could at least make the first three production orders. Didn't work every time, but once I started doing that, Life got easier for the first 90 days anyways. And that 90 days was quite often the time that everything was going to hell. And if I could make 80% of my problem go away by just simply telling somebody up front, you're going to give me three parts, I'm going to pay extra for them. I understand that you're going to be setting up your process, but you're going to give me three parts before I start. And if the supplier said they couldn't do that, then I didn't want them as a supplier. And that only happened once. And then I never called on them again. They never got a chance to quote or bid unless they came to me and gave me compelling evidence that they had changed their process. That usually involved a situation where they matched my quality requirements, they gave me the parts I needed on time, and they showed me how they had documented the changes that they made to their system to make that happen. Because I certainly didn't want to have somebody who just went through, made however many parts that they needed to make cherry-picked the good ones and sent me three good pieces. Because I knew later on, as soon as they thought everything was going well, they would try and slip the junk in. That happened. That's why I ended up with one supplier that didn't get to do that to me anymore. 
Okay, that blade is scraped down as far as I can get it. Uh, there's no etch on it, so really nothing there to save. I'm gonna take some sandpaper to it. Clean it up. Must be springtime's coming, there's birds chirping. And that's my cell phone. Somebody's sending me a message. I like having a cell phone. I like the idea of being able to contact somebody if I need to. But I kind of got turned off on the whole idea of a cell phone from carrying one for work for so many years. So when I retired, I decided I was going to not answer a cell phone right away. So if you call me, I'll get back to you, but leave a message. Because I'm not going to stop what I'm doing and run and answer the phone. I like working on saws, I like sharpening them, I'm, I like having them all neat and shiny and all that, but the only reason I'm working on this one today is I'm waiting for glue to dry on another project. And I have found if I don't find myself something to do to keep me occupied, I am a poor... Let's see, how do I want to say that? I don't take waiting well. I want to have things move, I want to have things happen right away. And I will tend to fiddle with them if I don't give myself something else to occupy my time. That's why I'm cleaning this saw blade. Much better to be productive and end up with a saw blade that I like and fiddling with a glued up part and end up screwing it up. What was that Clint Eastwood said in that movie? Man's got to know his limitations. Mine is no patience.
have a kink on the end of the blade. There. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about anything in today's video or any of the other videos in the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all.